The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Jolene Schaefer, and I'm the marketing coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Sage Abra Suite End of Life, Modern Systems You Should, you Should Consider, presented by Nathan Triplett and Jeff Olson of SWK Technologies. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment after the presentation to answer our one survey question. And as a reminder, our 2021 SWK Virtual Empower Conference is coming up on May 4th through 6th. Be sure to register to learn how to get the most out of your Sage ERP. The registration link will be sent in the webinar follow-up email, and I'll include it in the webinar chat. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools and support whenever you need it. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Nathan and Jeff. Perfect. Thank you, Jolene, and welcome everyone to the webinar today. Give me just one moment as I get my PowerPoint up here on screen. I hit the right buttons. Okay, so our webinar today is around Sage Abra and the end of life. And we're going to talk a little bit about one, why Sage made this decision. We know it's news it's been out there for a while, but um, just to make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of why we're here. And then once we know why we're here, we're going to talk a little bit about what is next. So my name is Nathan Triplett. I uh, lead our HCM sales practice with Jeff Olson. Um, again, we're going to give you some background information around why Sage is making the decision today, some of the differences between ABRA and HRMS. We're going to talk a little bit about the migration process, if that's the direction you want to go. And then Jeff's going to take you just through a really high-level overview of some of the key differences in look and feel within the HRMS application. So why is ABRA being retired? Uh, the number one reason, really the primary piece here is the underlying database. So you may have heard BFP or Visual Fox Pro. So ABRA is written on an old Microsoft database. Visual Fox Pro it was very popular back in the day, but support has been ended on it for, I think, five plus years and extended support has been ended as well. So when we think about um, new versions of the software or really new versions of our operating systems, next versions of Windows, hot fixes for that comes out, there's really limitations that Sage is dealing with when it comes to the underlying database and technology that just don't make it very smart or very safe for you as a customer to utilize this long term. Um, beyond that, the Visual Fox Pro um, piece is the really key component, but there's also a level of consolidation and development resources where for a long time Sage was developing, enhancing two products. And from a customer perspective, it's in from Sage's perspective, um, it's just easy. You're going to be able to put more into a singular application um, and then having a move forward application that's on SQL on a current architecture just quite frankly made sense um, for Sage and really for our customers. So what does it mean in terms of the ABRA retirement, right? And it means a couple different things. So the official retirement was in December of 2020. Um, and as, as of that point, if you've not reached out to Sage already, you try to call for support, break fix support, all the things that were included in your maintenance agreements, you're no longer getting that. You're no longer getting the tax tables for payroll being updated, um, which depending on which states you're doing business in or have employees in could be a challenge. There's no product updates. So when we have critical things um, like compliance changes, like updated OSHA reports or I-9s or W-4s that are built within the system, you're not gonna get access to any of those things um, within the application. 
which could really lead to huge compliance items. And beyond that, if you're, especially if you're using you know, Abra, it has payroll data in it, making sure that stays protected. You're getting hot, patch, hot patches and fixes that are gonna be compatible with all the latest releases from Microsoft and any other providers that are out there if you're using employee self-service. Um, you know, that's an edge um, for the internet for your data and your employee data that is not protected. So lots of vulnerabilities there um, from an operating system, from a hardware perspective. And at the end of the day, lots of risk. We do have customers that are continuing on Abra. Um, it's going to work. It's not going to stop running unless we do run into some of those OS and hardware um, incompatibilities. But more than anything, what we want to convey to you that if you're doing this, there's definitely a high level of risk. Even though you cannot call Sage for support, just know you can reach out to SWK. We may be limited in terms of what we can do. For instance, if we need like an update for Sage or if it's a compatibility issue, we may have our hands tied, but we're always gonna do the very best um, of our ability to, to get you to you know, through any issue that you're experiencing. Okay. When we go through a migration, so, oops, I just lost my screen there, bear with me. Um, uh, there's a couple different ways to go about it. So we as a business partner, as your business partner, are going to help with the actual services. And we've got two paths to do it. One is the traditional migration path. So in terms of Sage Abra HR, there's an upsize wizard that brings all of that HR data over. So all of your demographic data, your history data, job pay information, Anything that lives in the HR side of the system is going to transfer over and all of your history comes through. The payroll module is a new module to say JHRMS. So when Jeff goes through the presentation and when you see some of our additional documentation, one of the things that you're really going to see is the HR side looks pretty familiar, but there's a lot new on the payroll side and much of that's good. So we've got a couple additional, a couple options to get payroll data over. Our traditional approach is where we're setting up the data, we're pulling the data out of Abra into translation tables, we're pushing it in after and validating it. Um, it's something that works for some customers and we also have an automated tool that allows us to take on more of the onus of the setup and configuration where basically you're pre-setting up Abra and say JHRMS um, in both systems and then automatically the data between there as you're going through parallels are just gonna sync across and sync over. So we've got a couple options for migration if you determine that is and say JHRMS is the right path forward for you. We don't like to be prescriptive about it. And if it's something that you're interested in, you feel like we've got a good fit here, we can talk through the any advantages, disadvantages of both approaches and make sure we find what will work best for your business. So when we think about the reasons we've moved to say JHRMS payroll, so I'm gonna cover kind of the high level reasons and then I'll have Jeff take us a little bit further into the weeds, especially around payroll, as I mentioned before. That's really where the systems start to differentiate. Um, but when we think about the difference between, you know, ABRA to HRMS, you're getting enhanced analytics within the system and the technology, especially if you're a Microsoft shop or you use SQL reporting services, knowing this is on a SQL backbone, um, there's just a lot more that most ITs are gonna, the IT organizations are gonna be able to do with this data. Um, reliability, um, SQL is an industry standard for us. We had a lot of steps within um, Abra where we need to save and back up, just given the architecture of that database. We don't need to do those types of things um, anymore in HRMS and similar with the automatic backup capabilities of SQL. Um, we have enhanced security functionality within SQL. Through most screens, we find the speed um, is an improvement from Abra to HRMS. We've got some enhanced time off functionalities, a nice interface with our tax e-filing service, Atrix, if you're not familiar with that already. Um, with some functionality within HR, we are giving just a little bit an ultimate, ultimate email address. There's really not much different change or, or different many differences between Abra HR and Sage HRMS HR, but the email addresses are different. Um, we find integration, given it's a SQL database, um, is a little bit easier um, with Sage HRMS than it is with Abra. And then just kind of given the scalability of SQL, um, that is something that we see 
um, as an advantage as well. And so I'm going to go and introduce Jeff here. And Jeff, do you want to take us through some of the reasons that uh, folks, you know, are going to see advantages from ABRA to HRMS payroll before you kind of take us into a high-level overview of Sage HRMS? Absolutely. Thanks, Nathan. So some of the um, things of note as we go into the uh, from ABRA suite to Sage HRMS is you're going to see a simplified payroll process. No more um, trial quarter close, final quarter close, um, and an improvement in being able to, um, at a at a given point in time, being able to go back and make changes to a payroll um, calculation, recalculate, and continue on is is much simplified. The um, the new payroll has a feature called Open Payroll. And that feature is um, an extra audit step that doesn't exist in Abra Suite. Any changes to pay information, um, departments, pay rates, cost centers, um, employee address information, when those get changed between pay runs, when you run uh, the open payroll, you see those changes prior to going into the payroll process. Whereas before in Abra Suite, those changes would be made. And if you had a payroll processor that didn't wasn't aware of those changes, it may impact payroll in a way they didn't anticipate or intend. So that open payroll process is a new feature, a new audit, um, enhanced audit function in the new system. In Sage HRMS, we can customize check stock um, and to some degree, you could in Abra Suite, but it's much more freeform. Um, the checks are in, in um, Crystal Reports, and we have a lot of flexibility there. The data integrity is improved between Phys Visual Fox Pro and SQL. Visual Fo Fox Pro is not as, um, as structured or reliable as SQL. And there are scenarios and situations in Visual Fox Pro where the data could become corrupt. Those situations are almost, um, I don't want to say impossible, but highly unlikely in SQL. Enhanced GL distribution and cost center capabilities um, exist in, in HRMS. So tying your payroll, this general ledger journal distributions to your general ledger is much um, more robust in HRMS. HRMS also has some rate tables that don't exist in, in Abra Suite. Commissions, overtime, piece rate. These are additional processing calculation functions that exist that in HRMS that didn't exist in Abra Suite. Also, on your quarter-end and year-end processes, those are much more simplified. There's no trial quarter close, um, final quarter close. Those processes go away. You don't have all of the balancing and reconciliation between reports that's required in Abra Suite, a much simpler process. Sage HRMS has built in more than 9,000 local taxes. So if you're, you're in a jurisdiction where there's local taxes, that's a big advantage. We have 10 pay frequencies in Sage HRMS, frequencies that um, accommodate um, school districts and government um, pay frequencies better than Abra Suite could. And there's also an enhanced workers' compensation calculation and reporting function within the system. So those those are the top 10. Uh, there are other reasons, but we thought we would highlight those. Nathan? Very good. Thank you, Jeff. So I'm going to pass controls over to you and allow you to share your screen. Excellent. Okay, so a little bit of the technology. I'm going to pull up my screen. And we are sitting at the Sage HRMS login, correct, Nathan? Correct. 
Great. So we're going to go ahead and log into Sage HRMS. And you'll notice right away that there's a little difference in the user interface and the colors. And that's um, something that most users get familiar with quickly. So we won't spend a lot of time on the user interface and the differences. You'll just notice that there's some differences. You'll also notice that there's a new home page. And in the home page, you can have your own links defined. You can have um, access to additional resources that are just simple links from the home page. Sage resources, um, product feedback resources that are very helpful and useful when you need to, you know, to have some additional help. There's also a product messaging section. So Sage will send out product messaging on occasion, typically quarter end, year end, you'll see product messaging. You'll also see product messaging around maybe, maybe there's an urgent update, a security release that um, goes out that you need to know about. Those are gonna be listed here and you can read and, and look at those. There's a new search function. And from the home page, I can do an employee search. And so um, I can go in and just start typing in a first or last name, and it will pull up that employee's um, record, and I can go directly to that employee from the home page. We still do have the traditional advanced find, which is something you will be familiar with because that's what's in Abra Suite along with the additional um, filtering and searching functions under more options. So you can pull up an employee last name, first name ID here. When you have the employee up and running or up and on the screen, there's also the quick find function, which is the same function I just showed you from the home page. So if I click on quick find, I can type in first or last name, and it will, it will then search and find the employees by, by the first or last name, or even the employee ID number. So um, very, uh, very nice little quick um, example of an enhancement that didn't exist in Abersuite. The content, the, uh, the details, the information that you're going to see about an employee are pretty much the same in the HR screens. So along the top here, all these screens, personal, job and pay, benefits, time off, safety, career, and custom, everything but payroll, you're going to find the same information as what you're accustomed to in Abersuite. A few enhancements. Nathan mentioned the alternate email address. There's a few other little enhancements like that um, that exist in uh, HRMS that don't exist in Abersuite. The biggest change is in payroll. And I'm going to take you to um, the payroll processing section. And um, I'm just going to go through and explain some of these briefly. I mentioned open payroll and one is one of the top uh, 10 benefits of Sage HRMS. And that's the first function that you run in the payroll process. It goes out and looks for any changes that have been made since the last time you ran open payroll and um, reports those to you um, through an audit report. The time card entry is similar to the timesheet, um, interrupt date timesheets in Abra Suite. So that's, that's where you're going to either import time into the system or enter time into the system for employee, uh, hourly employees primarily. The calculate payroll process is similar to the trial payroll process in Abra Suite. It calculates payroll, it does all of the uh, calculations for earnings, deductions, and taxes. And once that calculation is complete, you can view the payroll and check and um, make sure that validate the payroll calculations through the pre-check payroll register. There's a little time off uh, process, uh, process time off function that synchronizes and updates time off balances between the time off and payroll um, time off balances. 
so that the time off that displays on the employee's check is going to be accurate. And then there's a print and post check function. This prints and posts both direct deposits and checks. And it isn't until you've completed this process that payroll becomes finalized. One of the key differences is in the, in the payroll process is that you can print checks, review checks, or direct deposits. And um, up until you do that and review them, you can still make changes to payroll. In Abra Suite, you finalize payroll before you printed checks and direct deposit advices. So if you found any errors or issues when you printed checks or direct deposits, you had to go back and do a restore and recalculate, make the changes, recalculate, reprint your checks, and uh, go through that process. Where here, even before you actually physically print your checks or direct deposits, you can view the printed checks and see if there are any issues or errors. If there are, make those corrections, simply recalculate and reprint or re review those checks. Then, um, like in suite, the final process is to create your direct deposit advice. And in Sage HRMS, we call it a create EFT file process. This is an enhanced process. You can run this multiple times. You can regenerate the EFT file. Where in suite, once you created the EFT, FT file, you couldn't regenerate that file unless you restored from a backup. So some enhancements throughout this process, making it smoother, quicker, uh, less cumbersome if you need to make corrections. And so that was um, uh, one of the major changes. I'll just mention that within the payroll section here, uh, you're going to see, as I go into the employee records, different screens than what you're used to. We won't go through this in detail, but um, just suffice it to say that there are some enhancements and some improvements here as well in how you um, track and calculate deductions and earnings um, and how you can break out direct deposits and EFTs. And um, so we, we love the new functionality and um, we think you will too. Um, Nathan? Perfect, great job, Jeff. Always learn a little bit when you do one of these presentations. If you can pass me controls back, I will share my PowerPoint again. Very good. All right, so at this point, we've given you a little bit of a background on kind of why this has happened. Some of the key differentiator is a little brief look at Sage HRMS. So where do we go from here? Um, there's a couple different paths that we can take. You know, when we look at moving from Abra to HRMS, we can help you certainly do a solution assessment. We often recommend a technology assessment there as well. And what that means is, um, you know, as an Abra customer, we tend to find people that move from Abra to HRMS maybe have been on Abra for a while or might want to think about some of the configurations they had with an Abra, how many earning codes we have, how we set up our org levels. So we always want to make sure if we're doing a migration or a move to a new system, we really think critically about it and identify any opportunities to improve on your current system. And so just know as part of our process, we're gonna do a review of your Abra system, make sure HRMS would be a good fit, a good fit for you, give you some recommendations in terms of any changes. We do offer other technologies as well. If you decide that Sage HRMS isn't the right next step for you, or if you wanna move from an on-prem system to a service-based offering, um, where you take kind of the responsibility of payroll processing, tax remittance filing off of your hands, we do have options for that as well. So just please feel free to reach out to us and we can help with those migrations. And we do offer some customization services as well. So um, our email is here. We will be sending out a recording 
Um, Jolene, are you still out there? Do you have some final slides or thoughts for us as we kind of, you know, wait for questions from the group to come in here? Um, yeah, thank you so much, Nathan and Jeff. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar. And just a reminder, everyone, we do have subject matter experts here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in, in real time. And it does look like we had a couple come in during the webinar, Nathan. The first being, between Sage HRMS and Sage 100, which one is the most common for Sage Abra users to transition to? That's a good question. Um, I would say most commonly probably Sage, if you're an Abra payroll user, um, very com common to transition to Sage HRMS. But it's one of the things that we will help you look at through the course of the process. And so we'll look at um, the functionality with an HRMS versus the functionality with 100. We find HRMS is much similar in terms of um, functionality parity to Abra than Sage 100 is. But at the same time, we have had customers that have moved off of Abra to Sage 100. So when we approach these conversations, it's very much um, agnostic not trying to be very prescriptive. We know we've got a couple paths um, for you as a customer, but really making sure we understand your goals, requirements, budget, change management, um, you know, capabilities, and we make a good recommendation from there. Good question. And we have one more. Can you go over the biggest difference between Sage Abra and Sage HRMS? Yeah, I think the, the, the biggest difference really is twofold. One, it's the fact that the underlying database is SQL versus Visual Fox Pro, kind of foundationally, that's a huge difference. And then two, it's that the payroll module in HRMS is not the same as the payroll module in Abra. So as a, using the HR side of Abra, you can move over to HRMS and we don't even really need to train you, right? You'll know exactly where you are, it'll feel very natural. Um, but from a payroll perspective, we gain a lot of functionality but it's a different payroll system. It's a different payroll engine. And um, for some, from all intents and purposes, it's a, somewhat of a re-implementation. So there's a little bit more training and learning and we feel benefit that goes along with that, um, but definitely something that you will see um, as different from Abra. Another Perfect. good question. And that looks like all the questions we have. So give me one minute as I take back screen control. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nathan and Jeff, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. For more information on Sage HRMS or Sage 100, please reach out to your SWK account manager or to Nathan's team for further information. And don't forget to register for Virtual Empower to learn how to extend the value of your ERP on May 4th through 6th. The registration link will be included in the webinar follow-up email. Thank you everyone for attending our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day.